All right, Mr. Wad, looks like we're talking about eruptions of volcanoes in this one. All right, sounds good. So we have two learning targets for this one. I can determine the type of volcanic eruption that will occur based on the chemical composition and the physical characteristics of a magma or lava, and then describe the relationship between the types of volcanoes and the plate boundaries. Perfect. So let's go into our first part, so viscosity. Uh, real quick definition, viscosity, a fluid's resistance to flow. Okay. So something with a high viscosity would be like cold maple syrup. Okay. And low viscosity would be like water. Okay, good. Cool. Um, so we're looking into like what's the relationship between temperature and viscosity. Mm -hmm. I always think of when I make pancakes and I heat up my syrup. Okay. So if I make it hotter, it's going to be lower viscosity. It flows really easy to, onto my pancakes. Mm -hmm. But if I make it colder, it's a lot slower. You can't pour it out on anything. Okay, good analogy. So we've got pictures here of a couple of different examples. In the top right corner, you've got a really traditional pahoi hoi flow from mm -hmm. Hawaii, really nice Hawaiian word that means ropey. And you just get a very smooth flow, and that's because it is a lower viscosity. So in this particular case, you've got basaltic magma, and the basaltic magma is hotter, lower viscosity, because there are fewer really big silicate structures developed in that magma at that time. And so it's going to continue to flow over longer distances and spread out and have low viscosity. Okay. In the bottom left corner... Uh, it's a uh, uh, lava flow, which is uh, a higher viscosity, mm -hmm. and it's kind of, it's Hawaiian for blocky or glassy. You know, I'm not really sure. I always just remember that it's, if you were walking on that stuff, you'd say, ah, my feet are hurting because it's really sharp. <laughs> but it's highly viscous. It's a low temperature flow. And when it flows, like it kind of cracks and like moves along in big chunks almost. Mm -hmm. So it gives you like this really blocky, sharp, edgy uh, flow of the lava. Okay, good. So I think we're going to move on and talk about what happens when silica contents are different in the different lavas at this point, or okay. different magmas at this point. So when you think about silica, you're going to think the higher the silica, the greater the viscosity. Okay. So more silica, you've got more well-developed silicate structure minerals in there, and that's what's going to increase the viscosity, so make it harder to flow, more resistant to flow. So the two examples we have here... Uh, we've got the low silica that's uh, more of like a Kilauea, so mm -hmm. like out of uh, Hawaii, mm -hmm. and it's more basaltic, so since it's low uh, silica, it's going to be more basalt. And uh, we get these really quiescent eruptions, really quiet eruptions, and it just flows. You were talking about before kind of that ropey flow, yep. the pahoyahoy flow. Yep. Okay. And then the intermediate silica, a little bit more silica present, so it's going to be andesitic, and this is where we're getting big violent eruptions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got lower temperatures, more gas is present. With the more gas, we get more eruptions. So Mount St. Helens, 1980 in Washington, that's one of the classic examples we see of that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the control over that explosive nature of the eruption comes from the amount of volatiles that are dissolved in that magma. Mm -hmm. So again, on the right side here, you can see all the ash and the gases. So the ash is the darker part of that cloud. The, the gases, uh, like water vapor, are mm -hmm. probably the whiter part of that eruptive uh, column. And that is probably an andesitic kind of, andesitic composition of um, ash and magma. And you can see that that falls into the middle range of the amount of volatiles. So you've got water, carbon dioxide, sulfur gases, that, that's what makes those gases really toxic and mm -hmm. makes it hard to work in, in a volcano atmosphere there. but. Um, you can see on the other side, you've got an example of a very low volatile eruption, so nice lava fountain there, and you can see low uh, volatile content, so you don't have the vesicular characteristic in that rock. So like these would be our vesicles that are just showing there was a lot of gas present right. when we had the eruption, yep. and here there's no vesicles, no gas is present. Very little gas, right. Very little, sorry. Yep. Good. Okay. All right, so now... Uh, if we look at then where the shield volcanoes are located, um, we've actually got a couple spots, and we said before that they're usually by either divergent zones mm -hmm. or by hot spots. So we said here we've got Hawaii, so we've got that nice quiescent flow, mm -hmm. nice low flow, and mm -hmm. it's a really high temperature, mm -hmm. uh, low viscosity lava. Yep. Okay, same thing with Iceland. Right. And then you have to remind me the these other East ones. The East African Rift. East, Afri yep. East African Rift. So lots Rift. of shield volcanoes those higher temperature, lower viscosity flows there. And then we've got 
over off the coast of South America, a couple of kind of hot areas mm -hmm. there, the Galapagos Islands and then Easter Island a little bit south of there. Okay. So those are the, sh the main shield volcano locations. Compare that to all these composite volcanoes on the next slide. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of them, right? Yeah, and these are mostly on those convergent boundaries. Yeah. So we've got um, a lot higher silica content. Mm -hmm. And we've got more gases present, and mm -hmm. so we typically get more of these uh, explosive volcanoes. Right. Okay, good. So I think that's the last slide in this section, and mm -hmm. uh, ready to jump out and take your quiz. So hop on your class website, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good luck, guys. See you Bye. later.